Hello viewers, welcome to Mojo for Industry and we are here at the Renewable Energy India Expo 2023. I am Subjit Roy and we are standing at the Bogen Solar booth, one of the most talked about stops at this year's Expo. We are here to catch up with Mr. Rajendra Kumar Kaura and Dr. D.N. Singh, the driving force behind Bogen Solar to get an exclusive insight into their latest innovations, sustainable initiatives and their vision for the future of clean energy. As we gear up for this exclusive interview, we cannot wait to learn more about their contributions to the renewable energy landscape and how they are paving the way for a sustainable tomorrow. So let's dive right in. So sir, how India can be a significant player and what needs to be done to make India a significant player in PV manufacturing? I will say two areas are needed to make the PV a very strong segment in India. One is on technology, the, we are absolutely at sea whenever the question of uh, manufacturing of machines are concerned. So CapEx, foreign exchange flowing out because most of the equipment for PV is being supplied by China only and they will stop at any time. So Indian government, out of the PLI schemes, the similar scheme they should give to those who would like to make uh, the machines themselves. So we should make our uh, own machinery for polysilicon, uh, which we are capable to. And the uh, only thing is that you have to make the supply chain out of the existing ones or encouraging them if the automobile industry can survive in India and uh, they can make the cheaper cars, why not uh, the machinery for the PV? So I think government uh, must make a change and they should give at least 50% capex and to R&D also a lot of money where the uh, academia industry as well as the users can come together this area is neglected. On the second side is the skilling. So the amount of the 40 to 50 gigawatt of the uh, capacity which we are looking to manufacture the modules, I think there is no skilled manpower even available for 10 gigawatt. The reason is there is a musical chair race. The same people are going from one company to the other there are no courses in the engineering for the solar and similarly same thing will happen in hydrogen also so the government must uh, start some institutes or to the private sector they should encourage that the skilling is done to the young engineers then they should be make mandatory before getting the degree to go undergo one year's training in the industry which is running so that India can really compete and make the good quality products. I would like to understand from you, what would you suggest for industry as well as for the you know, Indian uh, policy makers, what needs to be done to make India a very significant player in the PV manufacturing? I will specifically highlight the three risks. If we want to become a significant player, I'll, we must investors, as well as policy makers. So take care of those risks and plan for mitigating those risks. The first one is, you can somehow start gigawatt scale production, like five, six big companies, Reliance, Adani, Renew Power, uh, Premier Solar, Ada, Avavada. They're all planning to go for more than two gigawatt, three gigawatt. Adani and uh, Reliance, they are going to go for 10 gigawatt across the value chain. Yes, we do that. But then, we should not forget, uh, we should not do the same mistake of developing, building in-house R&D. And here we have to be on our toes to keep track of the technology and build up capabilities. And if possible, we should come up with a better technology than even Chinese in certain areas. Then only we will be able to compete in that. So this is the first risk, and this is how we can mitigate. The second risk is that Capital equipment. The capital equipment we are getting from China today, but tomorrow they can put restrictions. Right? Recently there is a news. Compute is not confirmed, but we are hearing 
that don't supply the equipment related to not manufacturing to India. Oh, thanks. So, if that kind of situation arises, maybe for cell manufacturing also, maybe material manufacturing also, what do we do? So, someday, India has to start thinking about how to be go for equipment manufacturing. And some money has to be burned, either by the government of India or by the big industries or maybe joint ventures. Right. Like Reliance could work on uh, some equipment manufacturing uh, of the solar cell manufacturing, like Adani and all that. So until as we do that and government also nudges them to do that, which government tries to put the uh, nudge, and then only we will be able to stand on our feet uh, one day. Right. The third risk is that you know we have to see that our policies are you know in sync, in synchronization. Like we have announced PLI, 48.6 gigawatt has to be made. Exactly. And uh, some 25,000 uh, gigawatt equivalent polysilicon, 26.8 gigawatt in got and wafer and cell end module, so around 48 gigawatt cell end module. Now for all this, we need equipment. And once we get equipment imported, then they have to be installed. They have to be commissioned. Processes has to be established. Exactly. And then we'll get the starting point. And for that, we need people from the supplier of the equipment, suppliers of the technology. Right. So Vargin is in that business to do for bring those things. We are trying to, but government of India has put restrictions on giving visa to Chinese technicians. Right. Right. From the country from where major equipment and technology is coming. As a result, we are finding very difficult how to sustain so these are the, this is the third risk, right. which has to be mitigated. Right. So thank you so much, Dr. D.N. Singh, sir. We expect that you know, policymakers as well as the uh, giant industry players like Reliance and Adanis, they will obviously give a listening ears to the kind of suggestions and recommendations being made by industry veterans like Dr. D.N. Singh. For more updates, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon.